Well, we don't say this too often, but there are a lot of good running backs on the waiver wire this week. Alexander Madison, maybe Rashad Penny, LaShawn McCoy, Darwin Thompson, Benny Snell. Who's the best one to get? Which Ryan are you streaming a quarterback? Fitzpatrick or Tannehill? Of course, we'll give you wide receivers, tight ends, and DSTs to pick up. And we'll look ahead to week 15 right now on Fantasy Football Today. Let's break down the waiver wire. Well, who's ready to stomach Sam Darnold again? This time in the fantasy playoffs, can you go back to Sam Darnold? If you don't have the uh, the stones to do it, if you just can't stomach it, well, you know, there's Ryan Tannehill or Ryan Fitzpatrick. Actually, not a bad week for quarterbacks, believe it or not, on the waiver wire and some running backs as well. Alexander Madison's going to be a huge priority. Welcome to the playoffs. Welcome to the show. This is Fantasy Football Today. Good morning, Dave and Jamie. Good morning, Adam. And morning. here's what I, th- this is the ultimate litmus test for Sam Darnold. Jamie, where do you have him ranked this week after he l- let the world down? 16th, I think. You got him 16th? Yeah. So you didn't even put him top 12? Would you Would you recommend him? No, I like all quarterbacks this week. Um, As a streamer, would you recommend yeah, him again? Yeah, would you yeah, go back yeah, if he's again? healthy. You know, he's got he's got a little bit of an injury situation, a knee and an ankle problem that he's dealing with. Or mm-hmm. I'm sorry, knee and, and a rib injury. But um, yeah, it's Miami. You know, he should, he should play well against the Dolphins. Okay. All right. Hey, listen, Good. it's. it's it should, right? Right. They give it the most points, the quarterbacks. But so, uh, you know, I, I know this is waiver wire and all that, but can we just give our condolences to the Tyler Lockett owners right now? Because they're really struggling. Everybody hurts sometimes. And right now it's the Tyler Lockett owner. Uh, I, yeah. I mean, he's, he's the, the fresh one. You know, there were certainly some more on Sunday that, that let you down, too. Um, and over the course of the season. But, yeah, that, that game last night was uh, frustrating. He did say after the game that, uh, you know, that they had a bout of the flu. And yeah. he said that he was, you know, sort of uh, still dealing with the effects of it. You know, who knows how much that impacted him. But three targets is just that's the thing that's hard to, to deal with. You know, like if he if he had, a, you know, three catch, 30 yard game, 40 yard game, something, you know, you, you'd say, OK, uh, just bad performance. But three targets and no catches. That's that's a killer. All right, boys, let's do it. Let's get people a win in their in their fantasy playoffs. I'm sure we've got some waiver claims to make ourselves. And uh, we start with the big news, the ones that we'll be tracking, the ones that will have the most impact on the waiver wire this week. Dalvin Cook left with a shoulder injury. He says that he thinks he can play this upcoming week. Obviously, this was last night, so we don't have a ton of information. Uh, They've got Detroit this week. Alexander Madison has looked good whenever he's played. He's averaging 4.8 yards per carry. Basically, anytime he's had eight or more carries, he's had a pretty solid game. So, you know, is Alexander Madison the obvious number one choice on waivers right now? Without a, has, without a doubt. Well, wait a minute. Doesn't Dalvin Cook said after the game, I'm going to be fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, there. He he did. Um, and it's differing reports. He said that it's the chest injury that he suffered apparently in week 11 against Denver. And then the NFL Network reported that he's dealing with a clavicle injury. So... Who knows? I mean, you know, they could be cautious again and say it's Detroit and we should be able to beat Detroit without you. Or maybe he's limited um, in terms of workload. But you have to pick up Alexander Madison first with the chance of he could be the biggest league winner in the fantasy playoffs if this is an injury that's worse than we know. Right. It's just such a tough conundrum, right? Because who, if he's number one, who's who's the second best? Like Pascal's got to be up there and... Uh, Does who, he? Yeah, who else? Uh, Zach Pascal for so. sure, especially with the report that T.Y. Hilton could be shut down. The fact that they're facing the Bucks. Um, right. Then you have you know the two other running backs that I think you're looking at, which is Darwin Thompson and Benny Snell. Um, you know, Snell clearly showed you that he could be the featured guy in Pittsburgh whenever James Conner's out. We don't know if Conner's going to return, and they get a great matchup against Arizona. And then you have you know Th- Thompson stepping in for potentially both the Williams guys in Kansas City if in fact Damian and Daryl are still out as the second guy behind LaShawn McCoy and they just haven't given LaShawn McCoy a ton of work. So I, I think it's Pascal and those two guys depending on what you need. You know there's some tight ends that you could look at as well. No love for Anthony Miller. Uh, I mean yeah Miller's fine but if Taylor Gabriel comes back you know you just got to wonder what the target share is and you know he's still a receiver for Mitchell Trubisky. I get so, it. You know, I get if, it. If you're comparing him to those guys, he's behind them for me. Um, he's behind the running backs for me. Uh, it's a close call between Miller and Pascal. 
And I get where you're coming from and, and the matchup against Tampa and all that. I think the Bucks defense has actually played a little bit better. Much better. The past couple of yeah, weeks. Better, for sure. And I think Jacoby Brissett has played worse the last couple of weeks. Sure, so but you're going on the one-game sample Pascal. size of T.Y. Hilton being out and Pascal stepping up in the first game without Eric Ebron as well. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there's – They don't two. really have a choice, right? Right. Because that's there. that's the whole point. It's uh, And Miller has played great. You know, he, he was, looks he was awesome against Dallas and, mm-hmm. um, you know, just – excuse me, against Detroit and, and just continues to make plays. But, again, it's still – Looking at the two situations, I'd rather have Pascal, and I'd certainly rather have the running backs. But it's it's close between the two. So, and, and I think the one thing about Pascal is that there's there's certainty there, right? Because it doesn't look like T. Y. Hilton's coming back this week. Whereas Reich, Reich said just while we're there, sure. Reich said yesterday um, they hope he's going to return this year. And so as so they that fall out of pretty bad as they fall 14. out of playoff contention, you wonder, you know, they're, okay. they're still very much alive. But if they continue to lose, because it sounds like he's not playing this week, then so, right. They may shut him down. That, so that feels like a certainty. Taylor Gabriel would hurt Anthony Miller. I agree with you on that. I don't think it would be huge because I think Miller's locked into the slot role, but he'll lose some targets. There's no doubt. And then with the running backs, Madison's value goes down if Cook plays. Snell's value goes down if Connor plays. Right. Darwin Thompson's value is who knows what. You know, they're playing the Patriots on top of everything else. I, I think that's where you can win with Pascal is that at least you know what you're getting. You're getting I, basically I, the number I, one receiver I agree. The, the, there's there's two things there though. One is Pascal. I don't know where you have him ranked. He's just outside top twenty four for me. Mm-hmm. Um, he's not what I would consider to be a league winner for sure, given his role, even what it is right now. Mm-hmm. If Alexander Madison starts for the Vikings against the Lions, oh, of course, he's a top ten running back. You're you're making the second round of your playoffs. So. You take the chance and, on, like you, I mean, we've talked about this a lot with, you know, from Wayne Gallman in week four all the way through, you know, Brian Hill and Jonathan Williams. And, you know, you can debate the varying successes of those guys. This is, even if you say, I, I need to save a little bit of money for the championship, or you unload everything on Alexander Madison just with the hope of if he's the starter for the Vikings for one week or three weeks, this is the guy. This is C.J. Anderson from a year ago. This is Damian Williams from a year ago, if he gets that role. Yeah, it's what no we've argument. been talking about for months, sure. why you stash him, why you stash Tony Pollard, why you stash Gus Edwards. Mm-hmm. These are guys that if they get this opportunity, they win you your league. Not just the second round, not just get you to the second round. They win you your league. They absolutely yeah. win you your league. There's uh, there's one other guy, I think, and he's he's more owned. But Jack Doyle, actually to me is is a, like a definite weak winner okay because you know Tampa Bay has been a lot better against wide receivers but they stink against tight ends so Doyle's out there that's one thing it's actually like like well, Benny that, Snell, I mean, there, there's one guarantee yeah. that you forgot we forgot it's Vance McDonald well yeah I think I'd <laughs> rather kidding, I'd rather have Doyle than I agree, McDonald 100%. but, but yeah, you're right sure. McDonald's got the Cardinals <laughs> but Doyle's a lot more owned than Vance McDonald and, but yes would, <laughs> would you McDonald's rather have Higby score. or McDonald uh, I've gone back and forth on it you know uh, I, I think if you're picking up one um, you probably take a chance on McDonald simply because if Gerald Everett does play, then Higby's role is reduced right. to whatever degree. So while he looked great against the Cardinals, you know we we've yeah. we we have a recent example of this. Dave, it was OJ Howard. It was a guy who's done nothing, plays the Cardinals, star, mm-hmm. back to do nothing. I played a little bit better last week, but, uh, but basically, nothing. I think that's what Higby is. Is he did yeah. great in the great situation. But Seattle is all, it's another really good matchup for it is. Higby if Gerald ever does. So yeah, listen, sure. tight end's not bad. All right, Mike Kosicki could help you out. We just mentioned like three or four tight ends you could pick up. Quarterback seems really deep. Running back, actually, I mean, the ownership percentages are a little low right now because obviously people are out of it and aren't competing. But you might get something from Mostert. He's a little bit further down on the list. But obviously, Rashad Penny could be out there. LaShawn McCoy could be out there. He, they're both owned in less than 80% of leagues, so available in some leagues and then obviously you have Alexander Madison and you have Benny Snell it's not bad I don't know if wide receivers quite as good this week but with Anthony Miller uh the stat that I wanted to give with Anthony Miller he's facing the Cowboys on Thursday you know Taylor Gabriel's out he should probably get eight or more targets because I think he has like 30 targets in his last or 33 targets in his last three games seven of the eight wide receivers who have had eight or more targets against the Cowboys have had 72 yards or a touchdown they just don't have a lot of targets go against them. But um, 74 yards are a touchdown for seven of the eight wide receivers who have had eight or more targets. And you would think that Anthony Miller would get that, even in a, a tough matchup because they have 
good cornerback. So that's so that's you know that's the Dalvin Cook injury, and we just talked about basically everyone. But uh, Damian Williams has a rib injury. Daryl Williams left with a hamstring injury. Daryl Williams probably not going to play, and we don't quite know about Damian Williams yet. But obviously, it's a it's a cloudy situation there. Sam Darnold has has injuries to his knee and his ribs. I know he had a terrible game, but now he gets the Dolphins. They are the worst against quarterbacks. Austin Hooper. He's 84, 87% owned, so he might be out there. And, look, Carolina's a, on paper a tough matchup, but they haven't faced good tight ends, and he's Austin Hooper. So you could find yourself getting him this week if he plays. And Julio Jones could play this week as well, by the way. Um, so we'll see. T.Y. Hilton we talked about. How about just as of now on Monday morning, or Tuesday morning, pardon me, do you expect these guys? Marlon Mack at Tampa Bay. James Conner at Arizona or Jordan Howard against the Giants? 0 for 3. None of them. Conner was practicing last week, so maybe he's back this week. And there was a report that Marlon Mack was targeting a Week 14 return. So I would probably look at Mack playing as likely, just given the fact that he went from, a, I guess, a cast to a, a, a smaller brace and was practicing on the side. So... You know, it sounds like he could play this week. Now you wonder again if, with the wins losses for them, um, you know, do they even bother? How much does that? Matter? That's why. Well, I, are you I would, kidding me? I would think with the Colts, they right, no, they saying. have to like, win. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like this is oh, a yeah, must yeah. must win for them. You know, so yeah. if 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 he's able to go, he's going to go. So <laughs> I I would, you know, not necessarily prioritize if you are uh, Jordan Wilkins or Naheem Hines. You know, if you're looking at it from the standpoint of that you need some help at the running back position because it's going to be messy without Mac there, and if Mac plays, he's going to be the the guy. But we don't know yeah, if he's going to play. We don't know. If he's going to there's play. no certainty on him playing, and there's no certainty yet on James Conner playing either. Yes. So, but they are. That's, trying why, that's why I said what I said. Th- those two are trending in the right direction. Not to mention the Colts face the the Bucks, who have you know a stout run defense, as we know. Uh, how about these players? Juju at Arizona, David Njoku against Cincinnati, Evan Ingram at Philadelphia. Um, Juju, probably not. Uh, Ingram, I, I'd probably bet against as well. Who's the other one you said? Uh, it's David Njoku. I wouldn't be surprised if he played. I mean, you know, he's been getting closer. Uh, Freddie Kitchen said at the end of last week that um, there's still some things that they're working through. I wonder if that's some roster management as well, um, you know, trying to figure out who they would have to – get rid of to make him active or put him, you know, who they have to make him active to put him on the active roster. But, um, you know, they're, they're out of it now. So who knows if they're rushing back. All right. Those are some of the key injuries. Got some more coming up a little bit later. Not only are we going to help you out for week 14, but I'll give you some names for week 15, uh, like Daniel Jones, for example, and Ryan Fitzpatrick are facing each other. You could go with them. Uh, you could try David Njoku at Arizona. So that's why I hope Njoku plays because he would have two good matchups in a row, Cincinnati at Arizona. I don't know if you'll be confident in him this week, but you might be confident in Njoku next week. Um, we got some DSTs for next week to pick up. If anybody drops the Patriots, and they might. Uh, they haven't been so great lately, and they're facing the Chiefs. Well, they'll rebound with the Bengals next week. Uh, more on that in a little bit. So let's talk about any top priorities that we missed, or let's just kind of sum it up again. Madison, uh, if Rashad Penny and Alexander Madison are both available, who do you pick up? Uh, I pick up Madison because he's the one with the less healthy guy in front of him. Yep. Okay, and Pascal uh, and. Anthony Miller, who are who are some other wide receivers? I will, I will say this though, just in terms of the, those two guys, if you have a buy, I probably pick up Penny. If you don't have a buy, I pick up Madison because it sounds like Cook. This doesn't seem like season ending, so even though they may sit against Detroit, you can't use him. Okay, obviously, if we get a report tonight that Cook's going to be out for a while, Madison is totally clear cut number yep. one, right? Mm-hmm. So things change from Tuesday morning to Tuesday evening for sure. You can watch CBS Sports HQ. We'll give you the uh, scoop on HQ tonight. Um, who's your top priority at quarterback? Of the guys that are available in most leagues, Tano. I'll, I'll, I'll say Ryan Fitzpatrick. Okay, at the Jets. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of quarterbacks. I, I think everybody should feel good about their quarterback this week. I, I really do. There are just a ton of them that you could pick up on waivers that have good matchups. I don't think you're going to see a lot of transactions at that position, though, because it's the it's, playoffs. Because it's that, right. Yeah. Most of the teams that made the playoffs, 
they probably got a guy. Right. Uh, okay, so is there a quarterback that has like a really tough matchup this week? Like, would you start one of these waiver wire guys over Dak at Chicago? No, I'd still play Dak. I think they'll be okay, but, but I'd start Tannehill, Fitzpatrick, uh, Minshew um, over Kyler. Sure. What about Josh okay. Allen? Um, against the Ravens. No, I'd still start Josh Allen over probably most of these guys. I think Ooh, Allen's a little tough. bit of a different player just with his rushing ability that he'd still be okay. And where does Jared uh, Goff compare to these guys? Oh, I like Goff this week. So I I'd start, yeah. um, you like, you start, like Goff these guys this over, week? Yeah. He's at home. Well, I got him 13th. Yeah, I'm 12th. Um, I, I, I think, look, you're, you're – the the last thing you want to do is gamble on something that you don't really know. And I, I, Goff is is certainly comparable to these guys because of how he's performed. Um, Josh Allen, you could put in this category as well, uh, based on the matchup against the Ravens. But you know, like we saw Tannehill play well last week against the Colts and give you seventeen fantasy points. You know, Fitzpatrick can still turn into Fitzpatrick. You know, uh, Darnold, for example, look what happened to him last week against the Bengals and against Miami, who which was a, a, has been a layup all season long and I know it's fluky because he lost the touchdown to Ryan Griffin he had 14 fantasy points in that game mm. you know so it's not always a, a, a slam dunk when you're talking about guys that have questionable situations yeah and for Goff I don't know how much we want to get into this he's 81% owned like he scored 11 fantasy points in the three games combined the three games before he faced the Cardinals who cure everybody they're the worst the Seahawks typically give up about 21 fantasy points right around there to sure. any good quarterback they face. That's exactly what they gave up to Kirk Cousins last night. I don't know. Like, I don't think that Jared Goff has done well against a team that ranks better than four, than 20th against the quarterbacks. And Seattle's 14th for what that's worth. So unless he has a great matchup, he really hasn't been good this year. He scored 19 fantasy points at Seattle the first game on 49 pass attempts. I don't what I don't really want to trust my season to Jared Goff, but that's fair. I mean, look, you could you could definitely pick up Jared Goff, or you pick up a quarterback, keep Jared Goff, and make a decision later in the week. You know, you could certainly do that. Um, and and there are again, there are good streamers. So uh, let's talk about those guys uh, and other top priorities. Let me just get a DST. Give me a DST that you're going to be picking up this week. Texans. How about the Bucks? This goes back to what I was saying about how they're playing better in the Colts offense. Pieces are missing. They're, they've been pretty good against the run pretty much all season long. I don't think that they're such a bad option. Okay. I I think I would rather jump out of a building than start the Bucks <laughs> in my fantasy position. I bet you would start the Bucks over jumping out of a building unless you're jumping against out of the, the first Colts? floor of a building. But against like the, a really the, the, run yeah, heavy the, the, the only thing about the Colts, the only thing about the Colts is they they typically don't turn the ball over very much, and you know you're you're hoping for a low scoring game, which is probably what they'll give you. But you know Brissett doesn't get sacked very often because of the offensive line. Um, I don't know. I I like the way that they've been playing. Oh, well, Bucks defense has been playing much better of late for sure. Texans defense. That's a that's a interesting one. It's a good one against Denver and this first they it's are Drew Lock's healthy. first. They're playing it's Drew Lock, well. Yeah, it's Drew Lock's first road start. All right, I'm going to tell you about Harry's razors, then we're going to get into the waiver wire. Look at this face. Boy, do I need a shave. It's going to happen today. It's going to happen with Harry's razors. And we've got a great offer for you. Uh, we're partnering with Harry's to give you $5 off any shave set, including their limited edition holiday sets. Just go to harrys.com slash FFT, H-A-R-R-Y-S dot com slash FFT. There's going to be free shipping. I'm going to tell you about the offer in a bit. But I can actually tell you that I have given a Harry's shave set to my dad, my father-in-law, and one of my brothers, brothers-in-law, or brother-in-law, brothers-in-law, uh, and uh, they loved it. They were great. They're like, wow, this is really nice, and it's a great shave, and it's so affordable, and the blades are so cheap. They just, they cut out the middlemen. They give you a great product at a great price, and the blades last. They're German-engineered, and they are award-winning, so I swear by Harry's razors. It's the only razor that I've used, and I've tried so many, that gives me a really close shave where I don't look like I have a five o'clock shadow the second I'm done shaving. So the holiday sets start at just $20. It's good for your secret Santas. Um, and the blade refills are as low as $2 each. So here we go. We got the special offer. Again, you go to harrys.com slash FFT. 
Get $5 off any shave set, including the limited edition holiday sets. Get free shipping. Harrys.com slash FFT. Get a weighted handle with options to engrave. Five blade razor cartridges. Foaming shave gel for a rich lather. A travel cover to protect the blades. It's packaged in a handsome holiday gift box. And the free shipping ends on December 16th. So act now. Go to harrys.com slash FFT. Harrys.com. H-A-R-R-Y-S dot com slash FFT. Okay, let's get some names out there. Top priorities. Let's go to quarterback, Jamie. Who do we got? Uh, Tannehill, Minshew, Fitzpatrick, um, Kyle Allen. You know, it's sort of a sliding scale once you start getting to the the rest of these guys. But Daniel Jones, um, you know, two two quarterback leagues, Drew Locke and David Blau. Um, but I, I think Tannehill and Fitzpatrick are the two you want to look at, and hopefully they – do what they've been doing lately. All right, so Tannehill's at Oakland. They give up the fourth most fantasy points to quarterbacks. And uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick is at the Jets. And Gardner Minshew has the Chargers, which is a little scary, right? I mean, the Chargers are eighth best against quarterbacks. The only uh, two only that two I would trust this week are the first two, is Tannehill and Fitzpatrick. But Dave, Minshew... Dave, oh, yeah, go ahead, sorry. No, Minshew after that gets Oakland and Atlanta. So... Very good scenarios for him. And look, you know, you, you look at his track record for the season. He's appeared in nine games prior to replacing Nick Foles last week. In six of those, he had 20 more fantasy points. So, okay, Dave, your take on quarterback. Uh, Fitzpatrick's my favorite one because he's taking on the Jets without Jamal Adams. And that's should be good. I still don't think the Dolphins are going to be able to run the ball even without Kalen Balash. How will they do that? I have no idea. <laughs> Tannehill's right behind him. And then if I had to pick a third guy, it's Allen, Kyle Allen, ahead of Trubisky. They're both top 24 quarterbacks for me this week. Okay. Now let me ask you, let's throw Sam Darnold and Jacoby Brissett in the mix. Darnold against the Dolphins, Brissett at the Buccaneers. Where are they compared to uh, Fitzpatrick or Tannehill and Fitzpatrick? For me, they would be the top and bottom bun of the streaming quarterback sandwich of week 14. Darnold's at the top. Brissett is the bun, soaked in grease. Yeah, I, you can't trust Brissett at this point, even against Tampa Bay. And okay. then it comes back to Fair. whether or not you can trust Darnold, which I'm willing to do because I just don't think the Dolphins' defense is that good. And I, <laughs> yeah. and I think Darnold is, you know, hopefully he bounces back. If you can't trust him, totally get it. Uh, but I look at other quarterbacks like Fitzpatrick and Tannehill, and I would just rather try one more time with Arnold. Okay. So, again, you're starting Dak Prescott, you said, over these streamers? Dak Prescott, did you say? Yeah, he's he's at the Bears. Yeah, on, th on Thursday. Not easy. Rain Dakota Prescott. You're yeah, you're starting him over the streamers? Dak Prescott or yes. Tannehill? Really? Yeah. This is a I'm question. I'm just asking. Of course I'm going with Dak. I love Dak this right. week. Okay. Uh, that's, you know, that's it. I, Tom Brady, are we getting away from Tom Brady, or do we like him against the Chiefs? I like Tom Brady against the Chiefs. I think he's going to have a big game. Uh, he's 20th for me right now. <laughs> okay. And let's get some more names in there. So Gardner Minshew, we like him, but maybe not so much for this week, but Oakland and Atlanta in weeks 15 and 16. Mitchell Trubisky against Dallas. I mean, Trubisky's got 20 or more fantasy points in three of his last four games. Two of them were against Detroit, and one was the Giants. So Dallas is going to be a tougher matchup for sure. Daniel Jones at Philadelphia looked like a really bad matchup, but then you saw what Fitzpatrick did to Philadelphia. Hard to trust Daniel Jones. He's so hit or miss. He's also uh, hurt. I wonder if they would consider benching him just to be safe. You'll get your Kyle wish, Allen. Adam. You'll get Eli to finish the year. I would like Eli to play week 17. That's that's it. Oh, you're going to lose your bet to Heath now. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, the, so, actually, the thing about Daniel Jones, just like Gardner Minshew, you may not want him this week, but he's got the Dolphins uh, in week 15 and Washington in week 16. Uh, Kyle Allen's at Atlanta. Last time he faced Atlanta, he scored five fantasy points. <laughs> and he's been pretty good since then. So, and you the know, Falcons how much... have been pretty bad since then. Well, they were uh, good, yeah. and then... They got bad again. I'm worried about Kyle Allen's offensive line protecting him for whatever that's worth. I, I can't put him like in my top 15 or anything like that. You know, John Ross is coming back. 
and maybe maybe AJ Green. Who knows? Andy nah. Dalton is 16% owned. Five of the, he's facing Cleveland. Five of the last seven quarterbacks to face Cleveland have scored 20 or more fantasy points. The two who did not were Steelers. Rudolph once and Hodges once. Mm-hmm. So so Dalton could be interesting. And he should have had he should have had a much better game than what he ended yes. up having. Should have had at least two touchdowns. <sighs> okay, so to sum up, and then there's Drew Locke and David Blau. Um, David Blau, by the way, scored the second most points of any quarterback against the Bears this year. And uh, <clears throat> this week he gets Minnesota, who's actually not very good against quarterbacks. But I, I don't think most people in one QB leagues are going to David Blau. So to sum it up, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Ryan Tannehill, they're the streamers we like. Sam Darnold, Dave likes more than Jamie. Not really interested in Jacoby Brissett, and there are some other no, guys. No, Darnold's fine. There's just a lot of good quarterbacks this week. Right, but I do think Dave likes him more than you do, right? I do. Seemed that way. Uh, what about real quick, Derek Carr back home, better weather facing the Titans and Phillip Rivers at Jacksonville. Any interest there? No, I dropped them. I feel like you can't trust them. Even though the situation seemed good. I don't know how good the situation is for Phillip Rivers, but for Carr, it seems like a decent situation, man. I, I, I just can't trust him. That, fair enough to me. All right. Uh, let's go to the running backs here. Just a couple things to promote real quick. Uh, The Apple Podcast Review Mailbag, again, you know what to do. Ask us your questions with a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Wednesdays and Saturdays, we will read those. The unsung hero of fantasy playoffs in the past. That's what we want to know. Who's your unsung hero of your fantasy playoffs in the past? That's our Facebook group t-shirt giveaway this week. The Facebook group is Fantasy Football Today. Please join. It's really cool. It's a great way to get your questions answered, either by me or by Ben Schrager or by Robert Thomas, who moderates our group as well, or by the rest of our Facebook group members, our Fantasy Football Today listeners. So uh, join that and win a T-shirt. You will see the contest pinned up there at the top. All right, guys, the running backs. So... Just go ahead and repeat what you've already said, if you'd like. But who are the ru- running back priorities this week? Madison's one, Snell's two, Thompson's three for me. I think that's a good top three. I think if we knew for sure that James Conner was out, Snell would jump over Madison. and Unless, of course, we find out that Dalvin Cook is out, in which case Madison would be number one with a bullet. But outside of knowing those things, which we just don't know as of Tuesday morning, that's your top three. Madison Snell Thompson. Put Penny on that list. Madison Penny Snell Thompson. Yes. Put LaShawn McCoy on that list. He's seventy eight percent out. Madison Penny McCoy Snell Thompson. <laughs> do you need do you need a running back for this week? Yeah, it's week fifteen, baby. It's week fourteen, baby. It's and week fourteen. I, <laughs> I I almost wonder if you put LaShawn at the top of the list. Can't trust him. But you know he's going to play compared Look to everybody touches. else who you just don't know. I agree. Like I, I think the max is 15 touches, and you're hoping that he ends up getting like 70 yards. But if Connor comes back, Snell turns to dust. If Cook plays, Madison is an ornament on the bench. Thompson is useless if LaShawn McCoy plays. I'm starting McCoy over all those guys if that situation bears out. Well, no, he said Penny. I start Penny over McCoy. Yeah, I'm not. Would you? That. That, that's interesting because they had the ball for 40 minutes last night. And I mean, that's kind of the know, way they play. Not like that. I mean, I don't know what to expect if they had a regular game. Uh, well, Penny played more know, snaps than, than Carson did. He didn't have more carries. He had more catches. I mean, he's, you know, he's clearly yeah. involved in what they're yeah. doing. And Carroll talked about it after the game how he loves having both those guys play. And I would say it's a tough matchup against the Rams because it is, but it was also a tough matchup against the Vikings. The the Seahawks do not care about your matchup. Uh, Bo Scarborough, where where would he be amongst this group? He's at Minnesota. If the game, we talked about this yesterday. You know, if the game script's right, he's going to get his work. If they fall behind, Bo Scarborough might be completely uninvolved. You know, so where's uh, Bo Scarborough? He's behind those guys. I'm not really excited about Bo because I think it's going to be a little tough for him this week because of game script. And then he's going to have the Bucks the week after that. Week 16 at Denver. That's probably a game where he might have double-digit fantasy points. So if you're willing to hold on to him for that long, you can add him now if he's on the waiver wire. You can keep him with an eye toward week 16. I'd rather have Patrick Laird than Bo Scarborough. In PPR leagues, I agree with you. 
I think Patrick Laird could be an unbelievable sleeper in PPR, but not one of the top three or four running backs that you're going to go get. You would rather have Patrick Laird against the best run defense in football. I think Jamal Adams being out is going to be bad for that defense all the way around. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's just been such a difference maker across the board for them. Run defense, pass defense. Okay. And Laird, you're well, not counting on for rushing totals. You're <laughs> counting on him catching five Patrick or six passes. Laird. Yeah. No, Laird I see lad. The, I see the PPR La- point because Laird has outscored Bo Scarborough. In PPR. Uh, in, yeah. in PPR, yeah, because Scarborough does not catch the ball. I, has he outscored him? Uh, I don't know about that. In two of the last three games, he has. What, really? Yeah. Scarborough's been relevant for three weeks. Oh, Laird well. Two of his, Laird, Laird, Laird in two of his last three has been better. Touchdown. Okay. Yeah, no, okay, PPR makes sense. Uh, I don't know about non-PPR, but that's a that's a good call. Duke Johnson could be available. Darius Geis could be available. I'm telling you, there's, there could be really a lot of inter- interesting running backs available on the waiver wire this week. How do you feel about them? Geis against one of the worst run defenses in football, Green Bay. And uh, Duke Johnson... See, the thing about Duke Johnson, I see he's 70% owned. Same thing with Tariq Cohen. He's 79% owned. Right. I feel like he's owned probably in every PPR league. So I don't know how much it makes sense to to talk about them. But do you like Duke Johnson this week against Denver? He's he's not horrible in PPR. The thing about it is without Derek Wolf there now for the Broncos, we've talked about this for years, that he's been a very big difference maker in their run defense. And so I think Carlos I could have a big game this week. So that probably negates Duke Johnson, but you know he can still have four or five catches. He had five catches two of his last four games. Any other names, Dave? Anyone else at running back? Well, Raheem Mostert is still out there. Oh yeah, yeah. Probably talk, talk about, about that guy. But it's it's a messy situation because we don't know about Matt Breida. If Breida was definitely out, I would imagine that Mostert would be the top running back for the 49ers and not Tevin Coleman. Such a crazy situation. And it's a tough matchup against New Orleans. So I I can't feel great about Mostert. I think he's flex worthy, but if if Breida comes back, all three of those guys can end up playing, and then Mostert you're looking at you're hoping that he can break a couple of long runs on twelve touches, maybe, t- maybe twelve. Right. If the Forty ers fall behind, that number is going to look probably more like seven. So <sighs> Breida is seventy two percent owned. If you see Breida and Mostert available, who would you pick up? I'd ride the hot hand with Mostert. We had a we had a good talk about this on HQ yesterday. He said he would take Breida because he thinks that he's, you know, just the guy that they seem to trust the most. You know, despite his ups mm. and downs and injuries, that his carries have been the most consistent when he's been on the field. That was uh, I'm I'm sort of paraphrasing what he said there. Pete Prisco said he would ride the hot hand with Mostert, and I agree with him. I just think at this point, you take the player who they seem to trust, and that seems to be Mostert right now. Don't but you? Yeah, it, right. It, it would be ugly if Breida plays. I would not prioritize Raheem Mostert. If you know, a lot of the guys we've talked about, I would take well ahead of Mostert. But what if you have a bye and you're not playing until week fifteen? Then Matt Breed is definitely back if he's healthy. Maybe. So but you could stash Mostert on your bench. He's playing Atlanta at home yeah. in week fifteen. I think that that's a matchup he could do well in. That's that's we could also learn about Tevin Coleman going back to face his former team. That's also Matt Breed yeah, still being a part of the game well. plan. I, I I'm not I don't mind I'm stashing Mostert, Mostert in that situation. Like if you're it wouldn't me, be a top if, priority. If you're giving me Mostert or Darwin Thompson, I'm taking Darwin oh, Thompson. Oh, fine. That's, that's fine. fine. Yes. I would. At, at least I would prioritize it that way. I'd rather have Darwin Thompson than Mostert. But if I'm not playing until week 15, and I give probably me a running back take, that might have a shot. I probably would take Patrick Laird over him too, just given the scenario of Kalen Balazs stinks. He's been involved well, in the passing game. Hurt. And you have Laird's schedule is great the next three weeks. Any interest in Peyton Barber? Cutting and a strutting? Uh, could be okay if he decides to be the guy. Non PPR flex, but we just you don't know what that wacky Bruce Arians it's is going to do. So stupid. You miss a blitz pickup, and all of a sudden you're you're sent straight to the seventh circle of hell. I don't know that I got a word on uh, Darius Geis. I mentioned him. How do you feel about him against Green Bay? Uh, I think you start him as a flex. Um, you know, I started him a couple leagues in must-win situations out of desperation, and clearly it worked out against Carolina because Carolina stinks. Green Bay's not far behind, but the touches are a little bit concerning. The fact that he still had fewer carries than Adrian Peterson, 13 to 10. Um, But the production, you know, he's played three games. He's got 13 or more PPR points in two of those. So he's finding a way to get the the job done. Uh, I hope that they're building towards something with him. 
you know, and maybe take the training wheels off a little bit and give him 15 plus carries and, you know, maybe a couple catches, but you still have Chris Thompson playing as well. So there's a, a, a at least right now, a limited ceiling. 30% of the snaps went Geis's way on Sunday. AP had 36%, Chris Thompson, 36%. He played the third most among the running backs in Washington. And he was the best running back. It just the eyeball test tells you that. But I don't think they're in a position where they're going to say, okay, this is all for you, Darius Geis. And then they should. AP, I know they should, you know, I, but I, they're they're not exactly the smartest franchise in the league. The one thing that you, you look at is um, both ways. The positive is they gave him a short area carry inside the five, and he scored. He converted it. He had the big play, the 60-yard run. The negative is, is that when they were trying to kill the clock at the end, they went to the veteran guy, and Peterson was the one carrying the ball at the end of the game. Having Thompson come back hurt him because he was actually playing more snaps than AP in the two games prior. Yeah, sure. and they're By probably the way, chasing points too. So These coaches need to stop going to fumble-prone running backs to kill the clock at the end of the game. Like Adrian Peterson's a Hall of Famer. He fumbles. Chris Carson, he fumbles. Don't give him the ball when you're killing the clock at the end of the game. He fumbles. Dummy. All right. So anyway, uh, speaking of Adrian Peterson, he is 62% owned. Would you pick up Darwin Thompson or Adrian Peterson? Thompson. I'd be more intrigued by Thompson than AP. All right. The Colts running backs. Do you basically want to just avoid them? And should you drop Jonathan Williams? Yes. I think Williams is droppable for any of the guys that we've talked about today. All right. Uh, just a couple of more. We got to talk about handcuffs here, but. Uh, if you don't need these guys, like if you're looking at your lineup and you're saying, I have no use for Darwin Thompson. Um, I'm not going to start Raheem Mostert, Benny Snell. You know, how many of these guys have just so much upside that you have to pick them up no matter what? I mean, to me, Penny and, Penny Mad and, Madison. and Madison are the ones, right? You and have to maybe, maybe Darwin Thompson, but I think he's more of a long shot to be that dude for Kansas well, City. Maybe we saw Miss Sean McCoy, I'd say too, right? Maybe, but I, I just don't Sean think McCoy that they, they want to give him a lot of work. But he has scored in all four games that Damian Williams has either missed or left with an injury. It's just so weird that they're it's not a giving great him more offense, work. and he scored. They should be giving him more work, and maybe they will. Because but they went the to Thompson. The they went to Thompson at the end of the game. Last uh, it's week. almost they went like to they Thompson, wanted to give him blowout. Right, they it wanted to blowout. give him work. Reed talked about it after the game. But they've done this with Daryl Williams, too. I mean, it's just McCoy gets them going, and then the second guy finishes off the game. Now, this yeah, is maybe, the game if they're chasing points. Thompson had all of his carries on the five. They were leading 31-3, to three, and he got but all it's, of his it, But it was Daryl Williams the same thing, too. You go back to week three and week four, and it was Daryl Williams in place of McCoy after Damian Williams didn't play. Yeah, I'm not sure it was, like, completely zero touches in the fourth quarter or anything like that, but you're right. Uh, but But they both... The running backs end up scoring because you're just banking on the Chiefs' offense. Carrying yeah, McCoy's guys. a All great right. flex. He's he's a borderline star depending on how you view him. So the handcuffs to own uh, Madison, obviously Tony Pollard for Zeke, Gus yep. Edwards for Ingram. Yep. Uh, who else? Who else are the handcuffs to own right now? The must though. That's it for me. Uh, you know, I, I I look. The Giants can't run the ball, so I can't imagine that Wayne Gallman comes in as better than Saquon Barkley. And Barkley's been bad. Um, you know the. The, the 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 situations that you look at, we we sort of have dealt with this a little bit with Todd Gurley. Same thing. You know, the, the Rams have been hit or miss and how they've been running the ball. Will Malcolm Brown come in and be a must start for your fantasy team? I don't think so. Um, you know, there aren't really a lot of guys that just get this type of featured work that are already not dealing with some sort of injury scenario or you don't know who they are. You know, for example, the Steelers, you know, there's there's already the backup there that stepped in and is Ooh, I got well. one. Okay. Always forget about Giovanni Bernard, but he'll get all those touches. Sure. And sure. he's usually pretty good when when you know when he gets the touches. It's true. I guess you um, could probably say um God, why am I blanking on the guy that's behind Christian McCaffrey right now and, and Mike Davis. Reggie Bonifone. Bonifone. Yeah. Right. You you could maybe look at that as well. Uh Reichwell Armstead. I mean, he'd have to get those I don't catches. know if he'd be as good he'd as Fournette. Right. Right. Maybe. I mean, he's obviously been terrible, but, you know, we haven't seen him in the lead role on this team. Is Deion Lewis? You know, should something happen to Derrick Henry? Yeah, I would imagine he'd be terrible. He might. Yeah. Oh. He might. Derrick Henry stinks. Sell high on Derrick Henry. <laughs> uh, JK. Okay, listen. Time to talk about Seeky here. Get serious. Get serious. All right, it's the holidays. You're buying tickets to things. Buy them on Seeky. Sports. Concert, comedy, theater. You know I use SeatGeek. All the time I use it. It is the best ticketing app, I promise you. And save 10 bucks off your first purchase. Use the promo code FFT 
on SeatGeek. SeatGeek brings in millions of tickets from all over the web. And when you search for an event, they pull in tickets from multiple sources. They rank them. They give you a grade on each ticket based on value. You can sort by price. You can sort by value. And then you, you, you have an interactive seat map to tell you where the best deals are on SeatGeek. You know, it just feels like ticketing websites make getting the event difficult on purpose, but SeatGeek cares about the customer experience. They have over 50,000 five-star reviews in the app store. They just have a better process, process and a better product. So SeatGeek stands out from the crowd, and you can stop searching for the perfect seat and start enjoying the perfect seat. And I'm giving you a personal endorsement on SeatGeek because I absolutely love it, and I use it all the time. So please join me and get on SeatGeek and get your first ticket with uh, 10 bucks off at your first purchase with uh, the promo code FFT. Download the SeatGeek app and use the promo code FFT for 10 bucks off your first SeatGeek purchase. Wide receivers. Uh, one more handcuff if you want to put him yeah. in this category. Royce Freeman, you know, just in case something happened to Philip Lindsay. Right. And it's interesting because you have to wonder, like, do you drop Royce Freeman? Do you drop Latavius Murray? These guys are useless, but... Latavius Murray, I'd have a hard time dropping because if Kamara gets hurt, no, yeah, that's a that's a handcuff worth mentioning. Yep, right. for sure. Yeah, probably can't one really of the pick better him up ones. He's too. Own. Right, but you just don't want to drop him because you could kick yourself if you lose Latavius Murray. Now I understand if you need a roster spot, you have to win this week. I get it, but see what you can do to keep him. All right, let's start with the wide receivers who are not so widely available. Jamie has a list of four here, and I added a couple of more. Uh, Debo Samuel, 100 yards or a touchdown in four straight games. His last two games, he's had the touchdown, not a lot of yards. Darius Slayton's at Philadelphia. Mike Williams. I don't know if you had him on there or if I added him. I'm sorry. But Mike Williams at Jacksonville. And Mike Williams on there. Okay. And Robbie Anderson, 66% owned, facing the Dolphins, who give up, give up the third most fantasy points to wide receivers. Usually one guy crushes the Dolphins. So I don't, yeah, but that's usually the case, not two. Um, and then I have Curtis Samuel on there with Greg Olson out and A.J. Brown at Oakland. I don't know how you feel about him. He seems to alternate good and bad games, so he's due. But I'll read the names one more time. Uh, Debo Samuel, Darius Slayton, Mike Williams, Robbie Anderson, Curtis Samuel, A.J. Brown. How excited would you be to pick up those guys? I'd be pretty excited to get Debo. He's been playing great. I think they're going to have to throw a bunch against New Orleans. They mix and match where he lines up and, and how they use him. He's got good versatility, and he's playing great. He's putting up good numbers. Uh, I mean, I'm Mike nervous. Williams is, is is due, obviously, to score. Um, he's got a good matchup this week against the Jaguars. Their secondary has been hit or miss. Uh, Boye has been playing well for the most part since Ramsey's been traded, but they still give up big plays. And he just had a 100-yard game you know, for what that's worth. So Mike Williams is interesting. Yeah, he's had uh, 69 or more yards in five, six of his last eight games. Five, his last, six of his last eight games. Uh, okay, and yeah, I, I mean, I'm a little nervous about Debo Samuel just because he hasn't gotten a lot of targets, right? It's it's six targets yeah. in his last two games. Well, so, I think you can forgive him for last week because it was just slop fest type of a game, and they were running the ball a lot. And I, he's a good number throw. three receiver. Okay, well, would you go to the waiver wire and start somebody like Zach Paschal or Sterling Shepard or James Washington or Anthony Miller over Debo? Yes. I would start Miller as of now. Pascal for sure for me. Dave, you're a little hesitant on Pascal. I am a little hesitant, yes. I will give you... Well, first, it's not just T.Y. Hilton, by the way, right? It's Chester Rogers is out for the year, and Eric yeah. Ebron's There's no obviously doubt. out. There's no doubt. Paris, Paris, Campbell. Paris, Campbell. Paris, Campbell. Paris Campbell is expected to return, but... Uh, That's not going to... That Yeah, I, I mean, it's he's in such a good situation against a, a defense that, yes, has played better of late, but I still think that, you know, you give anybody the chance for potential double digits and targets, they're going to come through. Are they going to be behind significantly in this game like they were last week against Tampa Bay? Probably. It, I, there's I mean, a chance. And they you weren't really behind it. significantly Ooh, against Tennessee. They were well, in the, it against Tennessee, score. and then the blocked field goal changed everything, and then they got yeah. blown yeah. out. The Bucks have one of the highest scoring offenses in football. They sure. score. The, the so Colts there's a chance they could be trailing. Uh, I but guess it's not like the Bucks thing. don't know that Pascal is their best receiver, and they're going to know what to try to attempt to do to take him away from Brissett. Right. If you look at the last two games for the Bucks, 
Julio Jones was disappointing. Calvin Ridley and Russell Gage had very good games. DJ Chark was a massive bust. D.D. Westbrook and Chris Conley, I, De- Westbrook definitely had a better game. I think Conley had more yards than Chark, too. Yep. So I don't know if that's a trend, that they're doing better against number ones. But still, like you see the worst team against wide receivers. They give up the most points to wide receivers. Pascal's their, their option. It makes sense. Um, now, how do we feel about Sterling Shepard at Philadelphia? How do we feel about James Washington um, at Arizona? Great matchup there. Anthony Miller, we've talked about a lot. How would you rank those three? Uh, again, the Sterling Shepard, James Washington, Anthony Miller. They're all number three receivers. None of them are must-start guys. Uh, so it just depends, again, what you're looking for and, and need. And look, for, for Shepard, he was outplayed by Darius Slayton just in terms of targets and catches. But you go based on his track record for the season, it, it was prior to this game, nine targets and five catches in every game with Daniel Jones. And so after what Philadelphia's secondary just looked like against the Dolphins and probably chasing points from the Giants' standpoint, I like Shepard as a number three receiver. I, I think Washington, you know, he's it's fluky how he scored the two touchdowns with Devlin Hodges, but he scored the two touchdowns from Devlin Hodges, and he's facing a Cardinals <laughs> secondary that looked completely lost against the Rams and just got rid of their best cornerback or this, the best cornerback based on play. Obviously, Patrick Peterson is their top guy, but um, uh, who was it? Brock? Is that they cut? Uh, Tremaine Brock yeah, got cut. They, they cut him, and, and Pro Football Focus had him rated as their best cornerback, one of the top cornerbacks um, on their team. Uh, on their team. Well, their top cornerback on their team. So, you know, there's there's an opportunity there. And then Miller's just been playing very well. So I think all four guys have a chance to be successful this week. I just look at the situation for Zach Pascal, and it feels like it should be the best. I'll all take right, more Miller. Names. I'll take Miller over Shepard and Washington. I think Miller's close to a number two receiver. Shepard and Washington are flexes. Taylor Gabriel plays. Is that no longer uh, no longer? It, it would it would ding guy. Miller. It would push him down into the number three range. And, and Shepard would lose if uh, Golden Tate is back, and Washington right. would lose if Juju's back. You know, so they're all sort of flawed. And and Pascal as well. If if Ty Hilton is able to play, but just based on everything that you're seeing and hearing and you know coming out of all of these teams it sounds like ty hilton is out for week 14 and so if that's the case it uh, at least for me it's easy to hang your hat on on what zach pascal should be able goes to do. back to what i said at the beginning of the show which is he's got like the most cemented situation right. it feels like he's like you know yeah, what to it, expect with him it's just where there's alternate forces he, that could hurt him he's not in the scenario that madison is in there's also a chance that Golden Tate and Evan Ingram play. We'll have to see if that's the case. If they have everybody, I'm not sure I want to start anybody. I mean, I, I can imagine Evan Ingram would probably because he's sure. a tight end. But Philadelphia, for what it's worth, they just got torched by Devontae Parker. He's the only wide receiver with more than 70 yards against them in their last five games. All right, more wide receivers. Dave, let's take a look at Cole Beasley. Uh, he's, at, he's home against Baltimore, but he's got six of seven games with uh, seven or more non-PPR, nine or more PPR points. You know, nice little floor there for Beasley. D.D. Westbrook was the best Jaguars wide receiver facing the Chargers. They got beat up by Cortland Sutton, but still very good against uh, wide receivers. Russell Gage against Carolina. Jacoby Myers, Alan Lazard. I think there's probably a drop-off after Beasley and Westbrook. Uh, But I don't know. If Julio's out, maybe we go back to Gage. What do you think about these guys? Beasley, Westbrook, Gage. Uh, Lazard and Jacoby Myers. So for now, I've got Westbrook at the top of that list with Cole Beasley second. And I just wonder if Beasley just gets a ton of check down work against Baltimore. And uh, he's been playing pretty well. The numbers have been good. The numbers have been good for DD too, but we've seen him go up and down with Gardner Minshew. And I'll I'll stick to what I've been saying with Minshew all along, which is he's better throwing downfield into the sideline rather than the middle of the field, which is where Westbrook typically gets a lot of his numbers. Okay. Okay. Let's do a few more names. Randall Cobb at Chicago. Danny Amendola with TJ Hawkinson out for the year. Christian Blake, who actually had a better game than Russell Gage, just didn't catch the touchdown. Uh, He had the same amount of targets, but five more yards, one more catch. Chris Conley and Kelvin Harmon. Uh, He has had now 43 to 53 yards and five to six catches in three straight games. Kelvin Harmon is a Redskins receiver. And he'll be at Green Bay. Did I say any names there? Cobb, Amendola, Christian Blake, Chris Conley, Kelvin Harmon that are interesting to you? Um, Cobb is still the only one that's interesting. Yeah, he's he's been fairly consistent. He's battling an illness going into the game on Thursday. So just keep an eye on that. But otherwise, uh, you know, we've seen 
Amari Cooper struggled on the road this year. He's got a knee injury that he says he's fine. He's on an injury report, but just something to keep an eye on. What was the team that Randall Cobb used to be terrible against? Was it? Was it was it, not Chicago. He used to throttle it wasn't Chicago. Chicago. He used mm-hmm. to throttle Chicago. Okay. Yes. His best game of there. the 2018 season was against the Bears in week one when Aaron Rodgers had the knee injury and they came back and Cobb had the big play at the end to win it. Okay. All right, let's look at the tight ends here. So Austin Hooper, he was a breakout star. If he's available, you, you pick him up. Uh, do we think Austin Hooper is going to play this week? He practiced on Monday. Right. There's there's some optimism. Uh, Jack Doyle, if, if Hooper and Doyle are available, who do you pick up? Uh, you know how at the in the preseason I said there was the tight end bridge and Jared Cook was kind of on – he was the yeah. bridge tight end. And so then I've been saying there's a magnificent seven at, at tight end. You know, you go with the big three, um, Hunter Henry, four. I'm trying to think. Heath was reminding me this yesterday. Darren Waller, five. Uh, Cook, six. And Jared I forget Cook. Seven. Um, well, it's not Evan Ingram, guy? is it? Oh, uh, Mark Andrews. That's the magnificent seven. Oh. Um he said we got to start calling an elite eight now with uh, with Doyle, just based on the situation. Oh yeah, but wait, did you put Hooper in there? Because it's like a no, nifty nine if he, now. If, he, if he comes back, that would be the case. Yeah, nifty nine. You gotta love the nifty nine. So but those guys are all on the right themselves. side of the right side of the bridge. So yeah, but but okay. So you got the option of Hooper and Doyle. Doyle feels like a layup this week at Tampa Bay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, who would you pick up? I pick up Doyle just because you know health. We don't know if Hooper, you know, comes back, reaggravates his injury, how healthy he'll be, will he be on snap count? Yeah. And then there's Kyle Rudolph, guys. Kyle Rudolph, Detroit, that's his matchup. They've allowed five touchdowns to tight ends in their last five games. Rudolph is a star right now without Adam Thielen. Maybe Thielen's back. Do you think Kyle Rudolph can be good if Thielen returns? Yes. Probably not this, um, but there's no... Look, he's got a great relationship with uh, Kirk Cousins. And I would imagine that that still carries over even if Thielen does return. You'd wonder if Thielen you know, plays the same amount of snaps. We already have seen one time he re-aggravated the injury after playing in a game. So they're being very cautious with this. And so I, I think you buy into Kyle Rudolph if you still see him available on waivers. I, I, I think he's like at the top of the touchdown or bust tight ends if Thielen's playing. If Thielen's playing. I just, yeah. if, if Thielen's there, I think he's a guy that can take a lot of targets away from Kyle Rudolph in the middle of the field. Think about the touchdown that Kyle Rudolph had against Seattle. How it was back in the end zone, right in front of uh, Kirk Cousins. That's something that Thielen can do and has done rather easily all over the field, not just in the red zone. So I'm not I'm I would be nervous about Kyle Rudolph picking up that kind of yardage from game to game. Touchdowns, sure, but how many touchdowns did he have to begin the year when Thielen was playing? I think that number is zero, but I'm yeah, not I think zero. 100 percent sure. He now has a touchdown, Kyle Rudolph, in five of his last six games. So how about this? Kyle Rudolph He's got Dallas six, Goddard. six over six games since Thielen's been battling injury. He had a two touchdown game against the Cowboys. Kyle Rudolph, Dallas Goddard. Uh who do you pick up? Rudolph. For now, it's Rudolph, and then hopefully Goddard's still there if Thielen comes back. All right, other guys that are much more available. Jacob Hollister at the Rams. He's been great. Uh, he has, especially if Russell Wilson doesn't overthrow him in the end zone at Philadelphia. Well, I mean, he He's had six catches better. last night, mm-hmm. and you know, playing time is up. Luke Wilson being out certainly helped. And so... You know, I mean, he's worth buying into for it, sure. It's 10 plus PPR in, in three of his last four. It's six plus targets in, in three of his last four. It really should be four in a row. That touchdown, he did nothing wrong on the touchdown that was thrown five feet over his head. So he's Mike, he's an interesting yeah. one. Honestly, though, like Vance McDonald, should he not be ahead of Hollister and Gasicki and Higby? It's he, just he, we, we fell for this two weeks ago against Cincinnati, which has struggled against tight ends, and he had one target. Is, you're there, trusting Devlin yeah. Hodges, you know. Yeah, so I know. Oh, oh. It's 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 a dream. It's a dream situation because every tight end except for two have been good, and so yeah. I mean, if you're stuck, it's it's the greatest hail mary you can you can <laughs> take a chance on. But it's you you know you're banking on a guy like I wouldn't be surprised if it's Nick Vanette finding the end zone. Remember we had the Giants game when uh, it was Red Elson, not Evan Ingram. 
Yes. Against the Cardinals? Yeah. Yes. When um, it was Auden Tate instead of Tyler Eifert. Uh, I know Tate's a receiver. Sure. He just looks like a tight end. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's harder to trust this, I think, than it is Higby. And Higby was hard to trust just because, you know, he's typically not involved in the passing game. But that's something I think that you could go back to and say, okay, maybe it is worth buying into because – because yeah. every team is doing it's, it. Yeah, they're just so these teams bad. know. They so know. Bad. They know that there's an exploitable weakness in the Cardinals. The Bucks did it with OJ Howard, and you just well, saw how the much, Rams do it with Tyler Higby. How much do you like Gasicki and Higby this week? Gasicki's at the Jets. They give up the fourth fewest fantasy points to tight ends, but they really but that's with Jamal Adams. Well, that, that's and, and also with Jamal Adams. And yeah, Gesicki I mean, he, himself he, had 95 yards. It, it, it's his production has coincided identically to Preston Williams being out. Preston Williams goes right. down and they've leaned on him as the second guy. And so, you know, you look at what the the biggest takeaway for the Dolphins this year, if anything, is that Devontae Parker is clearly a good wide receiver in the NFL and could play. And Mike Kosicki is a tight end you could build around. And so they've, they've developed two guys that were viewed as flops. Yeah, by the way, great tweet by Dave yesterday about Adam Gase. It was awesome. Caden Smith, you could go to if both Ellison and Ingram are out. He's going to be more of a desperation play. And if you're sitting there and you're trying to decide between, uh, you know, between Kyle Rudolph and Mike Kosicki or something like that, you know, there's a chance. Look at your opponents. So look at the teams that made the playoffs. There's a chance nobody's going to pick up Mike Kosicki or nobody's going to pick up Jacob Hollister or Tyler Higby, who has Seattle, and they give up the fourth most fantasy points to tight ends. We're going to need Everett to be out to feel better about Higby. But, you know, what I'm saying is you can pick up a guy on Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, and if it turns out because Adam Thielen's back, you don't feel comfortable with Kyle Rudolph, there's still a good chance there's going to be a tight end you like on waivers. Just only half the league is competing right now, and the teams that have a bye might not be picking up anybody for this week. So, you know, you can think of it that way, and uh, you might be able to get away. With it. And by the way, uh, Ian Thomas at Atlanta yep. and David Njoku against Cincinnati. These guys could emerge. Thomas was pretty damn good last year when Olsen was out. Can you uh, uh, go back to the first thing you said, though, to start that little monologue that you had? Yeah, what did I say? Look at your team's opponent. Look at your, your opponent. You never do that. Look. I don't. I, I actually meant look at the rest of the teams that made the playoffs, not necessarily your opponent. But I, I actually think in the playoffs you probably should look at your opponent and try to block them. It's not a bad idea. That's fine, but don't make lineup decisions based on oh, what no, they've I, got I never going do. on. But blocking them, hey, yeah, that makes sense. What, where are you on Ryan Griffin this week? He's forty. He's sixty six percent owned facing the Dolphins. I currently have him thirteenth in PPR. Alrighty. He's behind Gasicki, Higby, Caden Smith. Hollister? I got Hollister a spot behind him. Really? Okay. Oh. So I he's mean, in the it's mix. Miami. They got to make amends for what happened a few weeks ago. I know it's late in the show, but we're going to take a real quick break here. And when we come back, I'm going to give you some week 15 options and we'll go drop or keep more on the show on that. We'll be right back on Fantasy Football today. So if you're looking ahead to week 15, you're so cool. You have a bye, whatever. Daniel Jones against Miami, Ryan Fitzpatrick at the Giants. Game of the week. Fle Can they please flex that game? Come on. Uh, Ryan Tannehill against Houston, although we're not sure Houston's a good matchup anymore. Secondary looks pretty good. David Blau is at Tampa Bay. Gardner Minshew's at Oakland. So I think the, the best name, their best matchups are Daniel Jones and Ryan Fitzpatrick against each other and Gardner Minshew at Oakland. You know, who would you stash if you were only going to stash one? Fitzpatrick right now. Yeah, I th think so. We're not going to include Tannehill in there? You can. Tannehill against Houston. I mean, you're just looking at matchup-wise. I, I love that Fitzpatrick one. has been has the better of the two matchups. Yeah. I'll probably stash... Maybe I stash Tannehill, figuring no one else is going to stash Fitzpatrick because it takes a maniac to really like Ryan Fitzpatrick. And then if I get to Week 15, or when I get to Week 15, if I want to go with Fitzpatrick, I just make the switch. I'm starting Fitzpatrick in a 2QB league over Matt Ryan. I don't hate that. What if Julio and Hooper play? Then you're probably going to start Matt Ryan. It's over. close. It is close. Listen, he's had those guys for most – when he's had everybody. Uh, is Hooper the key to Matt Ryan at this point? He I might be. I wonder if that's good call. what he yep. needs. Because Hooper's yeah. got and great Freeman, look, he, ha he hasn't the last month have 
has had all four of those right. guys healthy. The two receivers and right. the tight end yeah. and the running back. Uh, David Njoku at Arizona next week. I like Mike Williams against the Vikings. They really are just so bad. Like, it's so funny. I know Xavier Rhodes had the miscommunication, but he's still throughout the oh, game, throughout they the season. They target him. Yeah, he's oh, but he's always right there, and he can't make the play. He's always like a yard away from. He the just yeah, he seems you like know what that means. He seems like he's lost step a step. Slow. That's what yeah. it means. And and uh, Mike Zimmer was not happy with him last night. He benched him after the touchdown. We, you know what, we didn't really talk about DSTs. So week fifteen DSTs. If anybody drops the Patriots, they're at the Bengals. The Chiefs get the Broncos. The Packers get the Bears. The Bills. If anybody drops the Bills, which they might against the Ravens. They're at Pittsburgh next week. I think the thing, PST you know, I, I, I know what you're saying about people dropping them, but remember, there are probably, well, there are. There are, you know, if in 12-team league, six teams that aren't making transactions anymore. So they may have the Bills or the Patriots on their roster. And then right, well, um, if yeah, you're in the playoffs, yeah. if you're in the playoffs, you're probably not dropping those teams because you're also looking ahead to your next week's matchups. Just in case they're Don't there. drop them. Don't drop the Bills. Uh, so the Texans against the Broncos this week. Back to DSTs for this week. Mm -hmm. uh, who else? The Vikings? Against Detroit. Yeah, I cheated a little bit. They're a little above what we typically talk about. They're 67% owned, but I'd go take a chance on the team playing against David Blau. I know he played great last week, but still. I would too. Chargers at Jacksonville. What's the Packers' ownership? Is that too high? Packers are too high, yeah. Okay. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm going to vouch for the Bucks. They're going to be a top 12 DST for me this week. Yeah, I'll take a chance on the Titans too. I think you're seeing the Raiders unravel a little bit. I don't oh, know how healthy the Titans, the Titans are. are. Yeah, I don't know how healthy they're. They lost Cameron Wake, and uh, I don't know how healthy that secondary is. Didn't Jackson leave with a knee injury? Yeah. So their outside corners could be flammable. That doesn't matter against the Raiders because he doesn't throw outside. It's Tyrell Williams week. This is not a great week for DSTs. Am I wrong? To it's find, okay. to find, probably not. But that's why we told you. I mean, like I, I, I said the Packers last week. Uh, you know, we thought the Jets, but <laughs> that wasn't uh. so great. Um, Again, Jamal. The Adams. Eagles. Are, so, they, are, are you going back to the Eagles yes. after such a bad? Yeah. Yeah, I've Eagles. got them number yeah. two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, man, it, I, I it sucked I'll, last week, but just because play. that happened, it doesn't mean that it's going to happen again. I like the Texans. I like the way they're playing right now. Like they're coming. I, I they got some swag right now. Yeah. Uh, I like it. Uh, and so, are you getting away from the Saints and the 49ers? And the Patriots this week. Saints and 49ers play each other. The Patriots play the Chiefs. It's the safe route. You know, so the Patriots is the tough one to get away from fully, especially if they get McCourty back. But it's Mahomes, you know, so why would you risk it in the playoffs to trust them? I know they're at home and they typically do a great job against opposing quarterbacks in their building, but this is a different different beast. But you can't cut them because no. they've got Cincinnati yeah, you, no, the you week don't after. Cut, don't cut them. All right, let's uh, finish up with drop or keep. Go real quick here, guys. Just get my handy-dandy list of drops here. I believe Matt Ryan is the first on the list. Trying to buy some time. Yeah, Matt Ryan uh, would be drop, a, a no on the drop list. I would not drop him. Latavius Murray. No. Try not to. Do everything in your power to not drop him. Jonathan Williams. You drop him. He's on the cut list. Marquise Brown. If you need somebody for this week and he's the last guy on your roster, you can cut him. Okay. Yeah, he's at Buffalo, Marquis Brown. Brandon Cooks. Cuttable. Totally yep. cuttable. Mm -hmm. David Johnson. Yep. I think Larry he Fitzgerald. I think oh. he's a candidate. I think he's a candidate to be cut. I don't think you should do it. I don't think he's a spike cut. I no, think you should wait another just week. Drop Wolf because he doesn't play. I've been saying it for a month now to drop him in the column. There's no reason to hold him. Got 12 touches over his last three games. Larry Fitzgerald and Christian Kirk. Uh, they're cuttable. They're cuttable in non-PPR. A little bit tougher in PPR. Jamison Crowder and Tyrell Williams. I kind of like Williams this week, so I wouldn't want to cut him, and I wouldn't want to cut Crowder either. Crowder, no, for sure. Williams I think is in that category. I do think you can put Crowder in the possibly cuttable list in non PPR. Tevin Coleman. No. I I don't think I would want to. I think I would cut him for Madison and Penny. Oh, if he's yeah, your last for sure. Guy, Those guys, then, yeah. Yeah. And Terry McLovin. Yes. Cuttable. 
All right, guys. Good show. Thank you. Hope that was helpful, everybody. We'll take your tweets, your emails to help you out and get you ready. You can also join the Facebook group and uh, your questions will be answered, if not by us, by uh, other members of the group. Kind of help you out. Just a little group think there. Fantasy Football Today on Facebook. So for Dave for Jamie, I'm Adam. We'll talk to you tomorrow on Fantasy Football Today. Da-da-da-da-da-da.